Hi everybody, this is Lars from CatCamStuff.com. In this video we're going to look at the CamWorks material library. I think it's one of those things that many people put on their to-do list that they got to look into but have a hard time kind of like finding the time to get busy with all the stuff and it kind of like is let be. So we're going to do a quick video here where we're going to dig into the to the material library. It's really, really powerful in CamWorks. Um, it really kind of like goes in hand in hand with how CamWorks tries to give you an opportunity to take some of your knowledge from the shop floor and stuff it into your cam um, and make it really, you know, how you do stuff in your shop. So let's jump in here to SolidWorks. And as we're in here, might as well take a quick look at the uh, SolidWorks material library just so we can kind of like split the two apart. So if I right click here, you will see that we got some favorites in SolidWorks. You can change the favorites from in here. But if I click on the material library, you will see that SolidWorks comes. Uh, by default with a long set of, of different materials you can actually create your own materials and put in here but there's three main things the SOLIDWORKS materials are looking at one is appearances and and two and three is uh, mass properties for weight and then also if you're using it for like FEA analysis and stuff like that when it comes to cam there's really one thing we we only care about when it comes to material and that is feats and speeds so like I said CamWorks is really giving us a neat tool for this if we go to CamWorks and uh, the first place we normally run into the whole material thing is under your stock manager. In here you get a material drop down and uh, the whole feeds and speeds and material and stuff can be downloaded from campworks.com um, and uh, we will see all these different materials changing depending on the feeds and speeds. Now the other place we see the uh, material um, or feeds and speeds material list coming in handy is on our machine tool itself because CamWorks actually gives us a machine duty list here. So if you have different machines, you know, you might have a tool room mill, you might have a heavy duty machine, and just from the rigidity, uh, you actually want the feeds and speeds to kind of like be a little bit different, and even CamWorks gives you flexibility for this. If we go on and look at an operation, inside of the operation tree this the second tab is the feeds and speeds tab over here and you get three different selections you can either do operation which means that these numbers you plug in work for this specific operation you can go back to the tool if you have a very expensive tool using the feeds and speeds from the tool manufacturer this is where you can you know save those in the technology database what we're going to talk about here is the library the feeds and speeds library you can access it right from this button here if you want to and it will open up now this is the list that we saw in the stock uh, drop down inside the stock manager in here. Um, this list here, what you can do, you'll see there's some different information coming across from this list here. Um, you can uh, delete stuff out of this one here. And, and I would recommend, you know, if you, if you only work with a handful of different materials, you might not need all this different stuff that comes as def default here. You know, you can always just right click on something and hit delete and it's out of the material library. To add materials, you go to the third tab. Now over here is a list, and I can tell you that the list is long. And I think you will find pretty much every material you could, uh, you need to machine in here. And to get that into the extra material list is, is pretty easy. All you really have to do is you have to hit the checkbox, and then you can go up here and hit this install new material. That now gets added to that material list over here, the first tab. Now, the second tab over here is the feet and speeds. This is where really all the calculations kind of like get going. So you see the screen kind of like splits up. The first drop down, again, here's our material list. And you will see that the data is changing over to the right as I'm clicking on different materials. Um, if we look over here, you will see there is diameters of the, your, your end mill in this case. And you can add your own stuff in here if you want to add, add your own... Uh, uh, diameters in here you can do that there's plenty of room to add more stuff over here and you will see that the vertical line here is radial depth of cut so you could also go in here and add some more data in there if you want to so here you got the feeds and speeds for that specific diameter end mill and the inches per tooth these numbers here well you can just go ahead here and change those tweak those to how you know after you you kind of like run a job and find out you know your rigidity and stuff like that for that specific material you can go in and tweak it here the second tab down here is the operations so right now we got two and a half and three axis but if you can see here in the list here that there's a lot of different ones so you might want to look how a face mill uh, is set up you know if that's what you're kind of like running with so this really here gives you an opportunity to to tweak it down to even to fret mills and stuff like that the second one is that class we saw before, or the third one here. This list here, 
where you could choose if it's for the light duty or if it's for the medium heavy duty these datas will change for that and uh, the last one here is what kind of tool you're using um, if we go in and we look at maybe um, a drilling countersink you will see that we get a little bit more tools in here for this stuff now these two here we can actually add to these if you want to add a class you just go over here and you might have some special machine that you might want to add some kind of a class to you can go right ahead here and do that um, and, and, and add your own type of class and now you will have that class from the drop down that you that you can select you can of course also delete it again if you want to the same thing with the tool it actually gives you an opportunity to uh, to set some different materials in here and this can be another way for you to tweak stuff right so if I go in here and I might have some kind of like a coded um, uh, carbide that I have found works a little bit different than the carbide end mill I have I can literally go in and add my own class in here and now I have that and again you can also delete these out of here so this these material library here I definitely encourage you to get in here and tweak it because this is how you can get you know the shop knowledge on your specific flaw back into your cam product and really make it a lot easier for you to work with if we get out of this and uh, we get out of operation here let me just jump into the technology database and kind of like show you in there so one of the things was you know the machine duty now if you go over and we look at the mill for example and we go and look at the machine you will see that this is where you can set that machine duty in here for whatever whatever you have selected you will also see in the main page that there is a feeds and speeds tab over here you can click this feeds and speeds editor that will take it back into where we were and here you can as I also update you gotta update the stock material when you have made alterations inside of this feeds and speeds to actually get it inside the tech technology database so this feeds and speeds editor here is really really handy really really powerful and I definitely hope that you uh, will take the time to go in and play with it a little bit and kind of like find you know how you can get this data into your cam product I hope you find this video helpful uh, you have, as always I'm more than welcome to to send me an email Lars at catcamstuff.com or you can comment on the blog thank you and have a great day